Um, so once again, let's let's continue with um, another example of the locus of points. In this case, we want to look at a perpendicular bisector. All right. So here is um, one sketch is the locus of this point. Okay. So let me um, hold on. Let me do this. Um, and then we want to find a Cartesian equation of the um, of the locus of points as well. Okay. So as we did before, you. Um, once you have um, absolute values equals the absolute value of some complex straight away, you know that it's going to be a perpendicular bisector that bisects a line connecting some two points. What are those two points? To get those, you have to rewrite this equation in the standard way z minus the complex number this can be written as negative 3 plus 0 i. Okay? okay? So minus minus will give you the plus here. Okay. Then that is equal to z. Minus, this is going to give you 0 plus i. See that? So that this is the same as that. But once you write in this form, you know the two points, like z naught, my z naught will be equal to, will be at a point negative 3 and 0, and the other point z1 will be at um, x0 and then 1. Okay? So basically, this, the locus of this point will be the perpendicular bisector of the line joining this. So you just sketch these points, right? So you're gonna have uh, this. I'm gonna have uh, negative three, let's say negative three is here, uh, zero, so that is this, and then this is zero, one, so zero and one will be there. Okay, so there's a line connecting this. Okay, so I have a line connecting those. That is not the locus. The locus is the bisector of that so the line that cuts this into two. So any line that will cut this in two, all right? This is should be a straight line like that. Okay. So this now is the locus of point that are represented by by this. Okay. So basically, that is the that is the sketch of the uh, the locus of points. Good. Know that this is the complex plane. Right? So this is you know, real Z and this is minor. Okay? So now how do you find a Cartesian uh, form? Right? Of okay. this. You do the same thing. You let you let um let Z be um, some x plus y i and you plug it in there. So this implies that um or here. This implies that the absolute value of x plus y i plus 3 is equal to x plus y i minus i, right? Again, I can square both sides, so I don't deal with the uh, square roots. This I can rewrite that as x plus 3, okay? I'm combining the three parts. And then I can rewrite this as x plus y minus 1 i. A complex and imaginary, okay? So it's a locus, so it can be this squared plus that squared. So I have x plus 3 squared plus y squared must be equal to x squared plus y minus 1 squared, okay? So expand them. Uh, that should give you x squared here. This is 6x plus 9. y squared is x squared plus y squared. This is minus 2y plus 1. Okay, so obviously it's easy to see that the x squared will cancel out, the y squared will also cancel out. And then we deal with what is left. So we have, let me get rid of this. So we have, um, so I'm going to have, uh, I have 6x on the left hand side, 6x plus 9 is equal to negative 2y plus 1. I can bring y here. So 2y is equal to negative 6x. This goes here. That gives me minus 8, right? 1 minus 9. So that y is equal to negative 3x minus 1, 4. So, so this equation is that. And you can, you can plot it and see. Right? Passing the, 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 the
blood vessel now. The line connecting with those two points. Okay? So this is the Cartesian equation of the um, um, of that locus of points that were given. Great. Now I should warn you, okay, so be careful about this. Um, so warning. So when you see okay, so if you like warning. Warning in red, underline in bold. Okay, it's a warning. If you see z minus z naught is equal to some number alpha z minus z one. Okay, where this guy of course is not zero and alpha is greater than one. Okay, then you cannot conclude. You cannot conclude that this represents the perpendicular bisector of a line. Okay? So when you are given something like this, you have to find the Cartesian form of this. Alright? Then you can use that to sketch the locus of forms. Alright? So this does not represent when alpha here is greater than one. It's positive and greater than one. Then you have to be careful. Alright? Don't jump to conclusions. Okay? So an example is this. I have an example here. Okay, sketch the locus of uh, Z for here we go. So we have so given Z minus I is 2 into Z plus I. Okay, so given this one. If there was no 2 here, then straight away, right? If this was one. Then straight away we know that we are going to have a perpendicular bisector. But since I have a two here, I cannot conclude that it's a perpendicular bisector. Okay? So to sketch the locus of points, I need to find the Cartesian form of that before I do that. So you let so you let uh, as usual z is equal to some x plus y i and plug it into this and manipulate the resultant expressions. Okay? So that's what you need to do whenever you have equations like that. Okay. So from there, the equation will give me x plus y i of course minus i is equal to two into I have z, which is x plus y i plus i, right? So of course this is x plus y minus one i. Let me do the squares again. The square of this is 4, alright? And this is x plus, this is y plus 1, i squared, okay? So, if I take the modulus squared, I'm going to have x squared here, y minus 1 squared, right? And this is 4, and this guy will be x squared, y plus 1 squared, okay? So now I, I guess, manipulate this algebraically. Um, so I'm going to have x squared, right? Expand this, that is y squared minus 2y plus 1. Uh, this will just give me 4x squared, right? This is y squared, so that will be 4y squared. This will be 2y, so that's 8y, okay? And get rid of this. So we get rid of that. Um, y squared and 4, 2y will be 8y plus 1, but there's a 4 here, that is a 4, alright? Good. So, bring times together, I'm going to take these guys up here. So this will be left in 3, x squared, right? 4 x squared minus this. This minus this will be 3y squared, right? Take this, it will give you times y, okay? This will give you plus 3. That's equal to, uh, equal to 0. So you have an efficient you can manipulate. You can divide two by three. If I do that, I'm going to have x squared plus y squared, right? Plus 10 over 3 y plus 1 is equal to 0. Of course, then you know that it's uh, the equation of the circle. But you can do, you know, you can do more, right? 
you can't complete the square for the y parts, and then you're going to have x squared plus or have y plus uh, 5 or 3 squared, right? Minus the square of this, right? 5 over 3 squared uh, plus 1 is equal to 0. This implies x squared plus y plus 5 over 3 squared. Let's combine these guys. Let's see. I'm going to have, take this last side actually, so we need 5 over 9 minus 1, right? This is 9, then 5 minus 9 is what? 16. So that is 16 over 9, right? So finally, I'm going to have an equation that looks like this y plus 5 over 3 squared is equal to this is 4 over 3 squared. Alright? So you see that the locus of points is actually a circle. It's not a perpendicular bisector. It is a circle with center. Center is zero. And negative by a three. And the radius. Radius is equal to four by three. Okay? So that is why I said you have to be careful whenever you have equations that look like that. If the alpha is not 1, don't conclude that I said the perpendicular I said that. Okay? So in the next few lectures, we're going to look at a few more uh, locus of points. One of them will be the half line, uh, and the other will be the arc, arc of the circle. So we'll explain that. So I'll see you in the next lecture.